ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي وهادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد ان يقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واذكر اسم ربك ربك وتبتل اليه تبتيلا رب المشرق والمغرب لا اله الا هو فاتخذه وكيلا واصبر على ما يقولون واهجرهم هجرا جليلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت لا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين في كل البلاد يا رحمة الرحيم ان شاء الله انت ليش كنت باي وانا جس اهيد اوف تايم ليت يو نو ذات اي هاف ميكست فيلينجز اون ذا وان هاند اي ام ريلي هابي تو بي باك ات ذس كوميونيتي اي هاف بين ان فلنت ميشيغان فور اباوت فور ييرز ناو اند اي ام ريلي غريتفول فور ذا اوبورتونيتي تو سي فاميليار فيسز اجين and i pray that this visit of mine is uh, acceptable to allah azza wa jalla and it brings good for myself and all of you <coughs> at the same time these are also times of great tribulation for muslims and every few weeks something happens in the news that really darkens all of our hearts and makes all of us upset and this is one of those weeks if you're keeping up with the news you know what i'm talking about you know about that the protests that are happening all over many parts of the arab world and probably in the muslim world by extension in response to certain inflammatory productions uh, you know of very poor quality and i want to start even though that is the topic of my khutbah today from the quran's perspective i want to start by saying that those videos or that video in particular had not even 30 hits before the muslims started paying attention to it and so the fact that it's gotten to the attention that it's gotten we have become the best advertising agency for that ridiculous stupid film we've done that nobody else nobody was paying attention to that anyhow i want to i want to talk today i, I know there are many people sitting before me today but today's khutbah i am dedicating to my angry young muslim brother if you don't already know 62% of this, the muslim ummah today that is alive is 30 or under the age of 30 the vast majority of this ummah is youth And so I am dedicating this particular khutbah in this time of anger and reaction to my young angry Muslim brother. And that young angry Muslim brother of mine who feels that when the prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is insulted that he is insulted and he should do something about that. And his blood boils when the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasallam is spoken of in a way that he does not deserve to be spoken of. Even the slightest insult to our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is enough is enough to take all the happiness and joy out of your life and make you forget all of it because our love for him is that intense. People of other religions ask, why are you Muslims so crazy? When people make fun of Jesus on Fox TV, even though they claim to love Jesus, and they also show family guy on Jesus, when they make fun of Jesus on TV, Christians don't go crazy. People make fun of Moses all the time. Jews don't go crazy. People make fun of Hindus, and it certainly does happen. Hindus don't go crazy. What is with you Muslims? Can't say anything to you people. Don't you understand the concept of freedom of speech? Why do people go crazy? And our usual response, and you might think this was going to be my response in this khutbah, is that you know, you don't know what love is. You don't know. You think you love Jesus, but we love Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam way, way, way more, and that's why we go that crazy. But that is not my response today. That is not my response today. My response today, my first response when that question is asked to me is, 
How come I don't get angry when Isa is made fun of? How come I don't get angry when Musa is made fun of? Musa is the most mentioned messenger of Allah in the Quran. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned in the Four times the Prophet is mentioned. Ahmad. Muhammad is mentioned four times, Ahmad is mentioned once. That is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned by name in the Qur'an. Musa alayhi wa is 70 plus times in the Qur'an. When Musa alayhi wa is poked fun at and he's poked fun at a lot. A lot. When Jesus is made fun of and he's made fun of a lot. Where's my anger? Oh, that's their problem. That's their problem, that's not my problem. So first of all, there's something even problematic about the way we emotionally respond to things that we find offensive. There's something already problematic. But you could say, no, 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 but Allah gave a special honor to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, I agree, yes, Allah did give the Messenger a special honor. But it is the same Allah that says, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Jami'an ya'in. All of them. Allah is the one who sent peace upon all of the messengers. I want to start my, from this, this conversation with this young Muslim brother of mine, this angry young Muslim. I want to start this conversation with one thing, the honor of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the nobility, the respect, the love of our messenger, the status of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not something we give him. It's not something that comes from human beings. It came from the sky. It came from Allah. Nobody on the earth can take it away because it comes from the sky. The Quran is come, it has come from the sky. People can burn copies of it. People can make fun of it. People can make pieces of paper that the Quran is printed on and flush it down the toilet. It will not insult the Quran because the Quran is in open mahfuz. It can't be insulted. It's Allah, these insults. Our Messenger's honor is above them. When Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Isra has given our Messenger maqaman mahmuda. Allah has given that to our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Not a human being. And so this conversation first of all shouldn't bother you. If you shouldn't be angry at people that insult Allah's Messenger. You should feel sorry for them. You should feel sorry how stupid and how sad they are. They can't hurt Allah's Messenger. They can't hurt the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They can't even hurt our deen. The only one they can hurt is themselves. That's the only one they can hurt. But I want to go further in this khutbah. And I am angry today. I really am. I am angry. But I'm angry at my young Muslim brother. I really am. You want to defend Allah's deen? You want to defend this messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Just learn a few things about him first. Who is going to insult the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa more than the people that were spitting at his face? The people that were cursing him out in front of him? The people that were calling him all kinds of names to his face every single day? And who is listening to those insults? It's not just the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's every one of his companions who believes is sitting next to the Messenger, listening to the Messenger being insulted. And what's more, is that Allah mentally prepared you and me for something that you should know that as much as we love and honor and respect our messengers get used to the fact that humanity can hate messengers and that so much of humanity can insult messengers and say hurtful, mean, vile, disgusting things about their messengers and so much so that we recite those insults with the Jweed in the Quran. Yaquluna innahu la majnoon, sahirun kaddab. Those are insults against our messenger and other messengers. Alayhi salatu wa salam. But Allah recorded them in the Quran. We recite them when we recite the beautiful Tajweed. So we know this is not something new. How dare they insult the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do you mean? That's been happening since day one, man. Where you been? What Quran are you reading? And what was the reaction of those companions? How did they respond? <coughs> I'm reminded of a famous incident. It's got a couple of different narrations. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting next to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And some people come and they start insulting Abu Bakr. And one narration says they insulted him once. They insulted him twice. 
Sadhis and Sadhis, they insulted him once, twice, three times. Third time, the Amul Khan Siddiq got up. He couldn't take it anymore. Because they're insulting him, his family, the mother, the sister, the daughter. You know, filthy people, they don't have any respect. So he got up. Another narration says though, that Abu Bakr Siddiq kept sitting on the Abakman. And he didn't get up. And he only got up when they said, well, this guy's not budging. This guy's got a lot of patience. Maybe you should start insulting his prophet. That'll get him. So they start cursing out the Prophet in front of Abu Bakr Siddiq. You and I love the Messenger of Allah, but we're not going to compare it to the love that Abu Bakr Siddiq Thani Athnain has. We're not going to compare it. Abu Bakr could not take it. He got up. He got up and the Prophet got up. The moment he got up, the Prophet got up and walked the other way. And now Abu Bakr Siddiq is in a bind. Should I go after these guys, these idiots? Or should I go after my messenger? So he goes after the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and says, is this, I did something wrong? Did I do anything wrong? And a couple versions of this. So long as you were sitting, there were angels surrounding us. And so long as you got angry and got up, the, shayat, the angels left and shayateen came. And I don't sit where angels don't sit. That's what the Prophet tells him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the Prophet training his companions. This is how you deal with when I am insulted. Be patient. Be patient. I'm reminded of the incident of Ta'if. These people didn't just hurt the Prophet ﷺ with their words. They didn't just hurt him with their words. They almost killed him. They're stoning him. They're taking young hoodlums from the streets and are having the Prophet follow pelting him as he goes. And the Prophet ﷺ, bleeding as he is, takes his hand and grabs the blood before it hits the ground because he knows if it hits the ground, Allah's anger will come. I don't want this earth to be a witness that they shed my, a messenger's blood. The Prophet is not worried about himself, he's worried about these people, he grabs the blood from falling on the ground. And finally when the offer is made, you guys learned this in Sunday school, when the offer is made, he says, no, maybe their children, may not slabi him from their children and offspring. Somebody might say, la ilaha illallah. And you know the fact of it, after the passing of the Prophet wasallam, when the ummah was in turmoil, and there were some people supporting Islam and some people were not supporting Islam, the two tribes that held on through everything was Makkah and Baif. The biggest support of holding Islam together in the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq came one of the biggest supports. Fundamentally crucial came from five. The people who almost killed the Prophet Because the Prophet said, you know, I shouldn't be angry at them. I just feel sorry for them. I should make dua for them. That's my attitude towards them. This is the attitude of an ummah that has mercy. This is the attitude of we win. The, the, the Prophet has had many insults from Abu Jahl. And he still asked Allah, Ya Allah, give me one of those two Amr. Amr Amr, give me one of them. Still makes dua for SubhanAllah. I want to share something else with you. While we're on this topic, the Prophet was himself mentally prepared. You don't get angry, okay? It's like Allah tells him over and over in the Quran, when they insult you, you don't get angry. If they lie against you, other messengers were lied against too. It's okay, you're not the first one. As I recited from Surah Al Muzammil in the beginning of this khutbah, be patient over whatever they're saying. This is very powerful Arabic. Be patient over whatever. Ma in Arabic, the, the, the linguists say ma is adhan, it's more ambiguous. And if you say aladi, it's more specific. So if, if the ayah was talking about one particular thing that the kuffar said, the ayah would have been wasbir ala ladi yaqulun. But it says wasbir ala ma yaqulun. Yani whatever they come up with. They are insulting you with something today, they will insult you with something else tomorrow. It doesn't matter, you just be patient. And yaqulun, fihil wal mustaqbal. It's got the present and the future in it. So whatever they are saying today, and whatever they come up with in the future, don't you worry about it. And these insults against the Prophet ﷺ are not just limited to him. 
We know that when the Prophet moved to Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that his family is insulted. There's an accusation made against Aisha radiallahu anha. The Quran is full of accounts of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam being attacked by non-Muslims and even by hypocrites. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَغُلَّ It's not becoming of a prophet to be worldly and to have greed and to want more acquisition because the hypocrite said, oh, he goes into battle because he wants more. He wants more, that's why he wants to... The, the, the hypocrites were insulting the Prophet ﷺ. The kuffar were insulting the Prophet ﷺ. Hypocrites were insulting the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Who, who was what? What protests were happening? Those people, the Sahaba living in Medina, the Muhajirun and the Ansar, they love, they don't love the Prophet ﷺ? They don't see those insults? What houses are they burning down? What cars are they flipping over? They grab any, any non-Muslim they can see in the street and say, Oh, I see a Jew. The Jews said this, Inna Allah wa wa The Jews were the ones who said, Allah is bankrupt. Let's kill him. I see a Jew over there. You know? What has become of us? Where have we come? That, that's what you call defending this deen? I'm not angry. And you know, if you really want to be angry, if you be angry, you don't know Quran. If you really want to be angry, be angry, you don't know this messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You don't know these sahaba, you don't know these people. What are you angry about? You know? It's shocking to me. And it, at the end of this, I want to make a clear distinction for all of us about anger itself. Because there are ayat in the Quran, the light, when you read them, you just get rattled. You get rattled. And I want to share a perspective with you. When Allah's Messenger is insulted, Allah tells His Messenger, that's not an offense against you. They're not making fun of you. They're doing wrong, they're disbelieving in the ayat of Allah. When they make fun of you as a Messenger, you didn't come up with the Quran, you shouldn't be insulted, you didn't become a messenger on your own, decide one day that I'm going to be a messenger. I made you a messenger. I gave you this Quran. I have a right to be angry, not you. This is my, this is insulting me. Allah takes the, 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 the anger himself. Anger is deserved by Allah. But then the, some, my young Muslim brother might think if it makes Allah angry, it should make me angry too. If it makes Allah angry, then I have a right to be angry too. Let's explore that a little bit. I'll just give you one small incident to give you an appreciation. We live in a country in the United States where we're surrounded by the Christian community. I mean, you're in the Midwest, not four blocks go by you run into a church. I live in Texas, where pretty much mega churches are the norm, right? It's hard to find news radio, it's easy to find Christian talk radio. That's, that's, that's the reality of our, our time. So we're surrounded by Christian neighbors. And then, you, you know, you read the Qur'an and what Allah says about people who say Allah has taken a son. For one example, Surah Maryam. When somebody says that Allah has taken a son, easy to say, oh, Jesus, Son of God, you know, just easy, easy things to come out of their mouth. Allah says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ those little words. Now imagine, I want you to think about this, okay? If there is a Christian on the outside of this building, right outside, right on this other side of this wall, and he says God is a son, just sitting there coming, could you hear that? No. His voice cannot travel through the wall, can it? No. Allah says every time this, these words are uttered, the voice travels the entire skies and the earth. The entire universe hears it. And it's about to tear open. It can't take it. It's almost destroyed. That's how offended the entire creation of Allah is when it said that Allah has taken a son. We don't hear it. But in the rain, the entire skies are about to tear open. That's how offensive Allah finds when somebody says God has taken a son. That's the anger of Allah. And I'll keep the anger of Allah in mind. A group of Christians from Najran, 
come to meet with our Messenger وسلم, they hear he's a Messenger, he claims to be fulfilling the word of revelation that came before, so they come to meet with him. And these are people that worship Isa at the point when these discussions are happening. And you know what, back in the day, they did not have the Marriott, or the Hilton, or the Holiday Inn. Where are these Christians going to stay? And these are Christian ministers, these are priests. These are representatives of their religion. These are people, the ambassadors of the Christian faith. Where are they going to stay? The Prophet ﷺ decides they will stay in Al Masjid al Nabawi. Where are they going to pray? They're going to pray in Al Masjid al Nabawi, the Prophet's Masjid. They're going to pray in the, in the first university of Islam. That university? that teaches Islam, they're going to pray to who? Inside there? To Jesus. The one place that's now become the center of learning at that point in Medina for preaching Tawheed. A bunch of people are staying inside and they're calling on Jesus as Lord. That makes Allah happy or angry? Extremely angry. But who is supposed to be soft and lenient and courteous and understanding and not be upset and be, be, be generous and you know, the Prophet. Allah has a right to be angry. You and I don't. Allah is the master. He owns human beings. He has a right to be angry with his slaves. Other human beings are not my slaves. They're Allah's slaves. If anything, I can be worried about them. Allah never says to the Prophet لا تغضب عليهم He says لا تحزن عليهم He never says to his messenger, don't be mad at them. Because the messenger is never mad at them, he knows that's not his place. He says to them, don't be sad over them. Don't grieve over them. Don't worry about them so much. That's what he tells his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa What has happened to our ummah? An ummah of reaction after reaction after reaction. And I argue, and people say, why are Muslims so reactionary? Why do people get so worked up? And people give different kinds of reasons, right? I started the khutbah with that, they say, well, we love our messenger so much, that's what drives us crazy. That's why, you know, in Pakistan, and in, you know, Libya, and in Egypt, we're gonna go out there, and we're gonna flip some cars over, and we're gonna turn this one guy's store, we're gonna burn it down, because we love the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa That's That's your love of the messenger. That's what we've come to. And there are people here who also say, yeah, of course, but you know there's so many other things happening. I know there are other social, economic, political turmoils. These people aren't just protesting because of one issue. There's a lot more depth to this problem. But when you and I, or any other Muslim for that matter, start saying that this is part of Islam, then this is something that should, this should make us angry. Say that the Muslims are frustrated, fine. Say that they have economic issues, social issues, political issues, social justice issues. Fine. Don't bring Islam into it then. My deen is free of this. Don't drag it into it. It doesn't deserve this. It deserves to be honored for what it is. And so in this, in this final bit that I want to share with you before I let you guys go. For my young Muslim brother, once again. For my young Muslim brother. Our job in this world today is to be ambassadors of this deen is to let people know what Islam is do your neighbors know what Islam is? no there are people who live next door to the masjid for 20 years and they don't know what Islam is they've never been to a khutbah they're scared these Muslims they come and they park on our lawn and they go and pray and they leave we try, we try to sign a petition against them because they don't know how to park apparently that's probably how they park in Pakistan. And that's why they go crazy. I don't know. Do they do that at their workplace or do they just do that here? We don't know. But we know one thing, these, these guys, these Muslims, they, they hate their neighbors, so the neighbors hate them back. You know? That's all they know about Islam. They don't know anything about Islam. And you know what's even more sad? The same youth that all over the world is watching this ridiculously stupid film are the same youth that have never even read the entire Quran. They've never even read the book of Allah. You don't have time for those videos? You don't have time for Allah's book? You don't see that as a problem? The real issue isn't that we love our messenger more. The real issue is we don't have a fundamental education in our own being. 
That's the real issue. We don't know that our deen makes us civil, makes us decent, makes us patient, makes us not reactionary. It gives us control over our emotions. It doesn't let us run by our emotions. It doesn't turn us into these lab rats. It's not like, you know, these people, they want to make money. That's all it is to them. So they know, make something offensive about Muslims. Watch it go, man. We're going to go, we're going to go big. We're going to go big. Because we know what the Muslims are going to do. They're like a bunch of lab rats. You can play with them, just slide and poke them a little bit and they go crazy. And we play right into it every time. And the only one that benefits from this are the people who started the offenses to begin with. They're the only ones to benefit from it. Only ones. And by the way, if there's anything that's harmed, it's the effort of da'wah. That's the only thing that's harmed. Now if I talk to somebody about Islam, I can't talk to them about Allah. I can't talk to them about the Messenger wasallam. I can't talk to them about the Quran. I first have to talk to them about them, and the Muslims are not that crazy. I know you saw on CNN what Muslims do, and the only reason we're not doing it here is because we're afraid of the cops or something. The conversation's changed. I can't talk about my deen anymore, because I have to talk about the stupidity of a Muslim, of a young, immature Muslim who's easily manipulated. We are irresponsible to educate our youth and the youth across the Ummah to become mature in their response, to hold their emotions back, to respond intellectually, to respond with this. Allah Azza wa Jal took the most insulting things that were said about the Prophet and gave intellectual responses in the Quran. This is our religion. Two thirds of the Quran is a conversation with people who don't even believe in it. Makkah and Quran, what was the Prophet doing? Reciting it to people who don't even believe. And they were insulting it back, criticizing it back. And there was a discussion happening without anybody trying to kill anybody else. And if anything, they tried to kill Muslims. Muslims kept their cool. And actually Allah referred to that entire era, that decade of conversation between Muslims and Mushrikun. Refers to that decade back when, he, when the Muslims moved to Medina and reminds the Muslims, do you remember when the policy was kufu aidiyakum? Hold your hands back. You remember those days when your instructions were don't fight, just discuss? Remember that? We have to remind ourselves of what Allah Himself said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to stop being so reactionary. We have to start, stop picking one thing from the Qur'an, one thing here, one thing here, one thing here. Look at the whole, look at the entire picture that Allah has presented in this book. I pray that Allah Azza wa allow us a, a proper education in this book. These things will not go away. These reactions and this ignorance will not go away. These sad incidents will not go away until we get a proper education in Allah's book that not just affects our hearts, it, it, it you know, gives peace to our, it, it doesn't just affect our minds, it gives peace to our hearts. May Allah Azza wa educate ourselves, our families, and our entire ummah the way it's supposed to be educated. May Allah lift the ummah from the darkness that it suffers from. May Allah Azza wa make us of those who can speak the word of truth courageously and be able to engage with each other in civil, respectful disagreement when the time comes. And may Allah Azza wa make us of those who truly represent the beauty of this deen to their neighbors and to the world around us. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa